Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I know in today's video, God's going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is this. Don't exchange what God has for you for sin. Don't do that. I want to read you a story of a false prophet named Balaam. But the interesting is, Balaam wasn't always a false prophet. He used to be a good prophet. I want to let you know that in us, we have the ability to walk in the spirit or the ability to walk in the flesh. But the Bible says that if we walk in the spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So don't exchange what God has for you to walk in the flesh because of sin. Listen to the story in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse 9 through 13. This man named Balaam, he's a prophet of God. He has the power to bless people and they'll be blessed. He has the power to curse people and they'll be cursed. But then there's this evil king called Balak, hires him, wants to pay him money to curse God's people. Remember the nation of Israel when they came out of Egypt as slaves? Moses delivers them. Well, they're having victory on their way to the promised land. And the Bible says that Balak is scared of them. Balak is scared of them. And he hires Balaam, the prophet, a prophet of God. He hires him, wants to pay him a lot of money to curse the people. But God tells Balaam, no, they are blessed and cannot be cursed. And look what happens here. And God came to Balaam and said, who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt and it covers the face of the earth. Now come curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. So Balaam arose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So we see here how God told Balaam specifically, don't go with these men. You cannot curse someone who's blessed. Balaam is a prophet of God. Now, I need you to understand this, because as a Christian, you are going to have the opportunity, the same opportunity that Balaam had. You are going to have the opportunity presented to you to honor God and obey him. Or you're going to have the opportunity to honor yourself, honor the flesh, and chase sin. So look what happens to Balaam. God tells him, don't go. But what does Balaam do? He keeps being stubborn. And then you know what God says? Okay, go. But let me tell you, when God told him, okay, go, he didn't tell him, okay, go, because that was his will. Like, okay, go. This is, this is my plan. No, he told him, okay, go, because God's never going to force someone to do anything. Remember in the Garden of Eden, God had the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there. And people can ask the question, why did God put that tree there? Because how can God really say that he's given us free will if he doesn't give us another option? The reason that tree was there, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there, was because God gave us free will and he gave us the option. Look, you can obey me, you can love me, or you can obey and love yourself, right? That's the same thing that happened in Balaam's life. God told him no, but then Balaam was being stubborn. So God being the loving, good God he is, he said, okay, I'm not going to force you. If you want to go, go. And Balaam goes. But it's not God's will for him to go. Balaam's heart at this point, and you need to be careful, and everybody watching this video needs to be careful, because this can happen to any Christian, to any Christian. His heart went from being obedient to God to now being obedient to his flesh. It turned on him. That's why the Bible says that the heart is the most deceitful thing. If you're not careful, and if you don't, if you don't filter your heart through God's word, if you don't guard your heart through God's word, your heart can take you to the left, can take you to the right, can take you up, can take you down, can take you all over the place. That's why it's important that we always walk in the word of God because the word of God is unchanging. Look what else the Bible says. Numbers chapter 22, verse 34, Balaam goes and God is about to strike him down. This is the part where the donkey speaks to him in an audible voice. And the Bible says that he's mad at the donkey. Even though the donkey's talking to him, Balaam doesn't focus on the talking donkey. He's still so angry. This goes to show you that when somebody is following their own carnal lust, they're blind. They're blind. Like God can be speaking to them clearly, but they're still blind because they're following their own ways. But then God opens Balaam's eyes and he sees the angel of the Lord standing in the road waiting to strike him down. And look what Balaam says. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now, therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. What do you mean, if it is evil in your sight, Balaam? It is evil in the sight of God. That's why he was about to strike you down. Because he told you not to go, but then you got stubborn. And he said, okay, if you want to go, go. And as you were on the way, he was going to strike you down. And when he opens Balaam's eyes, Balaam says this, and let's read it again. If it is evil in your sight, I will not go. What do you mean, if it is evil in your sight? 
It is evil in the sight of God. But Balaam is still asking these questions because this lets you see something. Balaam really doesn't want to obey the Lord. He really doesn't want to obey God. He sees the angel and he knows that the angel was about to strike him down. But he really doesn't want to obey the Lord. He wants to keep following his own desires, his own carnal lust. And he says, if it is evil, it is evil. It is evil in the sight of God. I want to tell you something. That as Christians, we need to develop a heart that doesn't just acknowledge what sin is. But as Christians, we need to develop a heart that the same way God sees sin as sin, we need to see sin as sin. And the same way sin offends God, sin needs to offend us. And we need to say, Lord, I'm not going to live that lifestyle because I know it goes against you. Lord, I don't want to live that lifestyle. And in Jesus' mighty name, I'm not going to live that lifestyle. You see, God has called you to be holy. The word holy doesn't mean perfect and flawless. The word holy means to be set apart. There's a big difference there. Because somebody can be holy and still have fights in their life and still have battles in their life. Holy means to be set apart. You're reserved for God. A person who is set apart, reserved for God, can still be dealing and can still be fighting in their battles and God is still helping them. But a person who's not holy is a person who's not set apart for the Lord. They're a person that share themselves with all type of sins and they don't have an intention of being exclusive for God. I don't know. But when somebody gets married, I think they want their spouse to be exclusively for them. Why don't we see the Christian life like that? God wants you to be exclusively for Him. He still knows your battles. He still knows your struggles. But you can still live a life for Him. You can still be walking in the same direction He's walking in. But Balaam, Balaam wasn't doing that any longer. His heart has turned. Now I want to read you something else. We're talking about don't be like Balaam. Don't exchange what God has for you for sin. Listen to the Bible. Listen to the scripture. Don't do what Balaam did. He put his eyes on what the enemy Balak was offering him. The riches, the love of this world, the pleasures, the lust of this world. He put his eyes on that and he exchanged what God had for him for that. You know, Balaam went from being a good prophet to dying in his sins. God doesn't want that for any of us. He sent his son Jesus for you to pay the price for you. The Bible says for freedom Christ has come to set you free. He doesn't want you to be back in bondage of sin. Let's keep reading. Look what the Bible says here. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12 through 17. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. He's saying here, look, you got crooked roads. You got potholes in the road, spiritually speaking. You got rocks in the road. He's saying smooth the road out so that what is crooked can be healed. He's talking about our life, our spiritual life. He's saying if you got holes in your ground and if you got rocks in your ground, things that we are allowing in our life, he's saying remove those things, patch those things up so that you can begin to be healed. That's true. If you got things in your life that are always causing sin, that are always causing you to stumble, God is telling you smooth those things out let go of some of those things. Stop hanging around some of those things. Stop watching those things. Stop hearing those things so that your spiritual life can be strengthened. He's talking to these people about living for the Lord. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. He's talking about holiness, exclusivity, being set apart for God. He's saying if you don't have holiness, you won't see God. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Why does he name bitterness? Because when a person is bitter, they say this, why even try? Why even continue going? What's the point? I'm not going to try anymore. God is saying, don't get bitter. Don't have that attitude. Because if you have that attitude, it's going to defile. It's going to corrupt. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause you to stop living for God. And he's saying, don't have that attitude. And then look who he mentions. He mentions a man that just like Balaam also committed a great error in his life. That no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. He's talking about when Esau exchanged his birthright for a plate of beans. And he's comparing this to the pleasures of the world. He's saying, make sure none of you are like Esau, who exchanged what God had for him for a plate of beans. Something that was going to fill his appetite. Something that was going to satisfy his craving. And he was saying, don't be like Esau, who to satisfy his craving, exchange his birthright for a plate of beans. And he's telling Christians, don't exchange what God has for you for what the world can offer, for what sin can offer, for what carnal pleasures can offer. He's saying, don't exchange what God has for you for that. And that's the same thing that God wants you to understand. God has great things for you. God has great promises for you. Yeah, we're going to have trials. Yeah, we're going to have tests. But God has a great blessing for you. Yeah, you have your battles. But God has a great blessing for you. Don't exchange the glory of God in your life and the wonderful things that God's going to do in your life. Don't exchange those things for what the world and carnality and carnal appetites 
is causing you to desire. Don't exchange God's blessings for the sin of this world. Don't be like Balaam who took his eyes off of God and put his eyes on the riches that the world was offering. Don't be like Esau who took his eyes off of the birthright and put his eyes on a plate of beans, something to, to satisfy his appetite, to satisfy his cravings. That's the same thing that God wants you to know. Don't take your eyes off of him. Don't follow your own carnal cravings. Keep your eyes on the Lord and you're going to see his hand moving your life. I hope this video was a great blessing to your life. If it was, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I know will encourage you in faith. But before I dismiss, if this video spoke to your heart and if you say, man, that's me. I was being like Balaam, taking my eyes off of God. Man, that's me. I was being like Esau, exchanging what God has for me for my carnal appetites. If that's you, I want to ask you, repent of your sins. The Bible says that if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you, wash you, and cleanse you. So if that's you, tell the Lord, Lord, forgive me. Lord, wash me. Lord, strengthen me. I've been taking my eyes off of you, Lord, but no longer do I want to live like that. And he will strengthen you, and he will forgive you, and he'll give you the victory. God bless you. I hope you have a blessed day. I'll see you soon, Lord willing.